Hello, you bleeders and blighters. My name is TV Skyne. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the great Ace Attorney. And uh, something I was reminded of is that there's little extra bits in this game. There's a little, I think, the DLC, I don't know. Whether, but little extra bits um, here that are sort of attached to each episode of uh, of the game that I completely uh, forgotten to forgotten to look at. So there's eight of them. They're attached to, like, various uh, cases here and there. Uh, but we'll start with this one. You're about to play the escapade entitled Episode 1 in the Defendant's Antechamber. This escapade includes game the spoilers about the first game's story. Yes. We're okay with that. We have played that part of the game. 22nd of November, 3.08 p.m. Supreme Co Court of Judicature, Defendant's Antechamber number 5. Yes, look at my priceless treasure now. Myself. I have scrubbed and scrubbed. But the repellent odor of meat will never be repelled from its resplendent surface again. But you have it back in your possession. At least, you should be grateful, old man. How dare you? Um, excuse me, but I'd just like to get that Sabaton cushion there if I could. Huh? Huh? Rest assured, you miserable military malefactor, this is not over. Incarceration awaits those who would defraud a senior citizen for his priceless treasures. Watch your tongue, old man. Mark my words, I won't... Uh, uh, sorry, Sergeant, but could we just get that Sabaton cushion there as well? Well, uh, oh. I won't go to jail. Never. Imagine if I did. The very next day, my boy would starve without the chain of command in place to provide for him. Uh, using the child to protect yourself? Myself, I call that absent cowardice. Oh, really? And just who employed the old, poor, defenseless senior citizen tactic, hmm? The only way to find an enemy who's using underhand tactics is with a tit-for-tat strategy. Uh, sorry to interrupt again, but I just need to get that Western-style cushion there on the sofa. Enough of this insubordination! What do you want, man? Oh, please, uh, don't mind me. Ah, <laughs> My eyes deceive me, or is this the wide-eyed criminal from the trial before? Wide-eyed, perhaps, but criminal, no. What is this unhealthy fascination you exhibit with the seating arrangements of others, hmm? Why were you peering under the cushion of this upholstered seat? Oh, well, uh, the thing is... Any luck? Did you find it? I assume that's Kazuma, yeah. No, sadly not. I don't think it's here, Kazuma. Uh, you really are a liability, Rinosuke. Report! At once! Have you lost something, is that it? Yes. We were just on our way to a party to celebrate my friend's victory here, there. When, uh... I realized that my university pin badge was missing. Ah, uh, university pin badge, you say? Yes, from my collar here, you see? Ah, uh, affirmative. Uniforms must be kept in prime condition at all times. A missing badge is unacceptable. I thought if I looked around, I'd, it would probably turn up somewhere. Like the old tale of the Coban coin and the stake. A parable of which I am acutely aware. But I've exhausted my search now, really. The only logical conclusion is that someone must have stolen it. Don't look at me. I don't just find any old metal objects irresistible, you know. Imagine what would happen if Little Trooper Ido here swallowed something like that. I'm afraid we'll have to give up, Ryunosuke. Still, if you tell the office your student number, they should be able to issue you with a new one. <clears throat> What's the matter? Don't tell me. Yeah, I, I don't remember my student number. I don't believe it. You mean, this is the second time you've lost your badge, isn't it? Third, actually. <clears throat> if you didn't think you could remember it, you should have made a note of it somewhere. I told you that until it was blue in the face last time this happened. <laughs> yeah, I do seem to remember something. To, someone told me something along those lines. It was you, was it? Uh, you can't even remember who told you that you needed to remember it? Well, student numbers are six digits, Kazuma. Who could remember six whole digits? Yume isn't exactly a long established university, you know. All of our numbers are still rather low. In fact, they only used the last three digits. Well, I mean, that might help, I suppose. That might help? 
Reynosuke, it's only three digits that you need to remember. Just three. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is such a disappointment. Yes, well, anyway, young man, myself, I was greatly impressed with you on the quad room today. Oh, you mean me? A lawyer already, before you even graduated, and such a loyal friend to this one. This one? What's that supposed to mean? Oh no, I still have much to learn. In fact, uh, that was brought home to me in no uncertain terms only last year. My Achilles heel was spectacularly exposed <laughs> by my best friend here. Indeed. What? By me? Well, this is the first I've heard about it. Yeah. By Ryanosuke Ranohoda. You can't have forgotten, surely. It was last summer at the speech contest. The speech contest? Oh, that. Contestants had to take the stage and deliver a public address on any subject they chose. We were competing to give the most compelling and powerful speech. And yours was great. It made a huge impression on the audience. Obviously, since I was a budding student of law, I was determined to win. And sure enough, one by one, my opposition fell. When I reached the final at last, I came up against you. Yeah, so you did. Not being rude, but when I first laid eyes on you, I thought to myself, this cheeky, wide-eyed no-hoper is out of his death. He's gonna be a pushover. That's your version of not being rude, is it? Well, I paid for my complacency because it brought on that humiliating defeat. Defeat! How were your ranks compromised? My speech was going very well. I had the audience in the palm of my hand. They hung on my every word. And then, when I came to the very last line... Yes? What happened at the very last line? It was supposed to be a climactic again. Unfortunately, I completely fouled it up. Never. You mean, you stumbled on your words? Spectacularly. Even now, I can't believe I ruined it. Well, what on earth did you say, man? Rinosuke, you'd better say it. I still can't get my tongue around it. Uh, sure, of course. I can still recall it perfectly. What you said at the end of your speech, or rather, what you intended to say at the end of your speech was this. So arise, ladies and gentlemen, and applaud our forefathers' plight in the fight for filial piety. And what went wrong? Oh, what indeed. Myself, I see no problem with the pronunciation of these paltry words. In that case, old man, I invite you to say it yourself. Very well, then I shall. <laughs> so arise, ladies and gentlemen, and applaud our forefathers' flight and the flight, the flight, the fight, the flight for Philip, the flight for Philip. It's impossible. The arise, ladies and gentlemen, part I delivered perfectly. But the next part had me floundering for five whole five minutes. By the end of it, I was on my knees in front of the podium, a blabbering mess. And that's when the audience started to heckle you. Arise, arise, they were shouting. Hell on earth. Then of course, this man went and delivered his word perfect speech with a perfect ending. How did they go again? Ah, uh, let me see. So, my dear fellows, the message is simple. Treat your father and mother with respect. Something like that. I mean, talk about stating the obvious. But the fact is, I lost that speech. Uh, tongue tied is the only way to describe it. Well, it is quite tricky to say. I, oh, well, it is quite tricky to say, I agree. That final fight for filial piety, especially. And ever since that day, I've had this question whirling around in my head. Why did our forefathers choose us a choose such an awkward phrase. Was it to mock their children? I mean, it should never have been called filial piety in the first place. Gotcha! Well, at least you're going to Great Britain soon. <laughs> it might not come up much there. Well, anyway. Having lost that accursed contest, I came after you to ask you a question. How is it that you never trip up on your words? I inquired. 
And you just gave me a broad smile and said, Well, speaking fast is my hobby. I mean, really? What kind of hobby is that? Well, do you think you could take your hand off your sword? Besides, it's just a way to pass the time. <laughs> a hobby I have accidentally taken up myself when I started making shorts. After that, you talk you started talking at me ten to the dozen, like you were possessed almost. Honestly, you can't imagine the shock I suffer su suffered that day. You really can't. You're right. I really can't. Speaking fast is just the sort of hobby I'd expect a civilian like you to waste his time on. Well, you have to practice, of course, but there are some simple things to start with. Like this famous one, for example. Swift Samurai Sword Swipe Silently Sideways. Ah, yes, even a decrepit tongue in an ailing frame such as mine can find its way around that one. I've no doubt. It's just a bit of fun, really. I, I can't imagine anybody would struggle to say it. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't that right, Kazuma? Swift Swimmerized so Yeah! <laughs> a blabbering mess by word two. It's not just the samurai. Every good soldier needs to be able to handle a sword. That's why I've been busy teaching Ido the finer points of swordplay. None of this wordplay nonsense, Private. Come to think of it, not long after that, we started to attend lectures together, didn't we? And we got into that debate about family values at the Sukiyaki place on campus, do you remember? Yeah, your argument was full of jokes and puns and wordplay, as usual. I remember it well. Oh, was it? In any case, I swore that I would never let myself forget the shock you gave me back then. And as a symbol of how seriously I took that oath, I decided to wear this. My red Hachimaki headband. How do you keep making it below? Uh, sorry, Kazuma. Yes? Y you've lost me there, I'm afraid. I don't see the link. What does your red headband have to do with your oath? Because it will always remind you of me of that smug look on your face as you utter those tantalizing words. What words? You mean another tongue twister? I practiced and practiced until my tongue bled, but in the end, I mastered it. Mastered what? Well, I think it's time you heard this, actually. Listen carefully now. Here goes. Red headband, red headband, dead headband. There. Word perfect, see? I had actually been meaning to ask you about that. About the story behind your headband, I mean. Well, now you know. So that I'll never forget the shock and humiliation of that day. That's why I wear this red headband every single day without fail. Well, I don't know how exactly how much of a shock you think you had back then, but... It can't be more than the shock you've just given me now. What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you, but... The tongue twister I said didn't go the way you seem to have remembered it. Huh? It's just as faint as a swift samurai sword, so I can't believe you didn't know it, really. It goes, red bread pan, lead bread pan, dread... Dead bread man. Oh, it got me at the end. <laughs> Because I was trying to read it as it came up on screen. So red bread pan, lead bread pan, and dead bread man. That's reasonably doable. Wait, what? Bed red pan. God! It seems I've knocked some wind out of that headband of yours. It's not too late, Private. You could always start wearing red bread pan on your head instead. Your youthful vigor is manifest, young man. Your cheeks are glowing redder than your hachimaki. <laughs> Why do so many words have to be so similar? So, uh, looking forward to Great Britain, then? Where you'll have to deliver speeches in court in English? I suppose I can always shell seashells on the seashore. <laughs> seashore. <laughs> Sell seashells on the seashore. Rather. Even the little vignettes take like 15 minutes. Visual novels, man, they take their time. I like it. It has made the episodes turn out a little bit longer than I would like. Like, because normally on this channel, I prefer to keep episodes around an hour. But every time I hit the hour mark during a playthrough of this, like I'm like right in the middle of like a 
like a section that you kind of, where it kind of feels like if I split it up, that would just be weird and confusing, so I keep playing. <clears throat> So, 6th of January, 6.23 p.m., S is Buria, first class captain number one. It's almost two weeks now since we left Japan. I can't believe how quickly time has gone. So, our next port of call will be Shanghai. Who's there? Who could it be at this hour? A detective. A detective? Who? A great detective. I don't get it. What's well, a great detective? If you would just be so kind as to open the door. Oh yeah, sorry, of course. So, Cosmo met Sherlock, or Herlock. Uh, is something wrong, detective? Are you investigating a case? Wherever a great detective goes, great cases occur. Indeed, I am the root of all evil. Uh, s s sorry? Then I don't think I want you in my cabin. Under our very noses, on this steamship, a terrible theft has just occurred. What? You noticed, I presume, the brief power failure a short while ago? Oh yeah, the power couldn't have gone out for more than ten minutes, though. Indeed, yet that was ample time for this wicked crime to be perpetrated. I see. Well, clearly it's a case that needs investigating. Precisely. The culprit ran away in this direction, down the first-class cabinway here. Really? The thief came this way? I'm quite sure of it. It may have escaped the attention of the dim-witted crew, but not of the great detective. To that end, I would be obliged if you would allow me to investigate here in this cabin. Uh, well... How curious. Is there some reason why it would inconvenience you to have your cabin searched? Convenience me. Oh, well, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said no. After all, there's a stowaway in that wardrobe right over there. Well, it's just me in here, you see. No one else. So you might perhaps want to focus your attention on one of the other first class cabins. As it happens, you are the only first class passenger at present. The other cabins are vacant. Oh! <laughs> Did that rather tragic rumbling of the stomach arise from within you, my good fellow? Of course. As I said, I'm the only person in here. It's not long until dinner time now, so perhaps we could do this afterwards? I do apologize, sir, but it is of the first importance that the investigation is not delayed. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait, but where did he go? <laughs> How did he suddenly move all the way over there? Yes, without a doubt, if the culprit were to be hiding in this cabin, it would have to be inside this wardrobe. I shall need to examine this wardrobe thoroughly. I presume you have no objection. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to decline. Really, you won't find any... <laughs> Did those two rather tragic sneezes arise from your good self? Uh, of, of course they did. As I said, I'm the only person in here. You have a curious knack of talking while sneezing then. Twice, no less. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a tough one to argue. I was watching you quite intently, sir, and I assure you I saw no signs of a sneeze. Uh, could Rinos have held his nose? As I was saying, I shall need to examine this wardrobe. Oh, uh, we've had it now then. The game's up. Hmm. Nobody hiding in there, it seems. Uh, what? You seem surprised. No, 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 not, not at all. Yes, I am! He was in there for sure. I shut the doors on him myself.
Uh, more visitors. Who's this now? Excusing me! Oh, Seaman Stroganov. Sorry for disturbing, but crime is being committed on board ship. Yeah, I heard. A terrible theft, apparently. How do you know this? Uh, <laughs> well, the detective here just informed me, you see. Detective? Yes, I assumed you must have asked him to investigate. Detective, could you... Where did he go? I must ask you to cooperate with investigation into this clan, fully. Uh-oh, he's glaring at the wardrobe already. <laughs> well done. You found me. What are you doing in my wardrobe? My good man, I was merely assessing the practicality of concealment in such a place. And I would say that, at a push, a human could survive for up to five minutes in that crapped space. Reynoski has been in there for a fortnight. Is he not human? Who are you? Shh. This is the moment of truth. The great detective is about to unveil the sordid details of this wretched crime. You mean to s uh, you mean to say? Yes, there can be no doubt that the culprit of this terrible theft did indeed conceal himself within this wardrobe. What? But, but that's impossible. He couldn't have done. Because my best friend was in there the entire time. Or at least I thought he was. How can you be sure of this? Elementary, my dear fellow. The criminal left behind the most revealing evidence. How else could you explain these three bones? There! What the? He's right. Look at those gnawed bones in there. And three of them. Yeah, the criminal has escaped this time, but I will find him and crush him. Uh, could I ask you something, detective? Why, yes, of course. I'm always delighted to answer an inquiring mind. In this terrible theft, what exactly was stolen? Aha, what else? But some steaks on the rib bone. Huh? Did, did you say steaks on the rib bone? For this evening's dinner, three rib steaks were stolen from Sheep's Kitchen only a short time ago. There was malfunction with generator, and Sheep was without lights for ten minutes. Chef was a criminal, said that he ran down a first-class passageway. And now I'm on his tail! I'm afraid to say, dear fellow, that your man is no longer in this cabin. But how? Through the cabin door, no less. Having devoured his haul in this wardrobe, the culprit discarded the bones and concealed himself behind the cabin door as you came inside. Then, when attention was turned to the wardrobe, he seized his chance to escape through the open door. What? Make haste, my good man, after the culprit. I shall follow presently. Something troubles you, sir. I think maybe criminal is not running away at all. Uh, what are you suggesting? Now I know where the dog is buried, Mr. Asogi. Uh, me? There! When I think that you are culprit, everything is falling in places. The criminal that disappeared in first class passageway, the bonds in wardrobe. All clues are pointing their fingers at you. It was Herlock. Herlock took them. <laughs> He's the one who was running away. It's like, I need a place to hide. <laughs> uh, don't be ridiculous. I would never. Yes, yes, of course. I established at once that you couldn't be the perpetrator of this crime. You did? That? How are you so sure? My dear fellow, there are but two things in this world upon one... on which one can rely with total certainty. That two things. The first is the word of a great detective, and the second... The second is the tragic rumbling of an empty belly. Ah, not again. 
when I first entered this cabin. There did arise from this gentleman a belly rumbling so odiously tragic that it confirmed beyond all doubt that the man had not eaten a single rib steak in some time, let alone three. Why do I have to suffer this humiliation when I've done nothing wrong? Curses! I will catch this thief! He cannot have gone far! Indeed, assuming he decided against a post-meal constitutional swim. Well, if you will excuse me now, my apologies for upsetting your evening. Detective, one moment, please. Yes? That was a most remarkable deduction. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to tell me your name. Ah, it quite slipped my mind. You have been talking with the one and only... Herlock Sholmes. I see. Well, I'm Kazuma Zogi. I'm a student on my way to Great Britain. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Azogi. Oh, and before I forget... Yes? I feel I should warn you. Live cargo is strictly forbidden on this vessel. So you would do well to conceal the stowaway currently lying under your bed as carefully as possible. Oh, under the bed? I bid you farewell then, Mr. Asogi. <laughs> He's uncovered our secret. I suppose I should have expected nothing less of a great detective. Now then, when did you move in onto the bed? I thought we'd had it when you opened the wardrobe door. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was thanks to that split-second change you engineered. That I what? You distracted him for a moment, remember? <laughs> he suggested that he investigate the other cabins instead. Oh yeah, he turned to look towards the corridor, didn't he? Well, I couldn't see what he was doing, of course. But I thought to myself, it's now or never, and the next thing I knew I was under the bed. You really know how to give me a scare, don't you? Anyway, what's all this about the rib steaks, huh? <laughs> Sorry about that. I've, I've just been so hungry! Ever since we left Japan stuck in that tiny wardrobe? Well, I, you should know, you've been splitting all your meals with me. You must be starving too, surely. <laughs> yeah. Right on cue. And there was that power cut before, wasn't there? For about ten minutes? So it was then. I caught a whiff of the most delicious smell. And I thought to myself, it's now or never. The next thing I knew, I had the steak in my hands. This man just can't help getting himself into trouble. <laughs> well, all right, you were hungry. But three steaks? Thanks to you, three crewmen are going to go without tonight, I imagine. No, it was just the one. What? I only took one rib steak from the kitchen, that's all. But, I don't understand. Hey, I'm not that selfish. If I'd stolen three steaks, I'd at least have tossed one your way. I'm not your pet dog. Well, in that case, who stole the other two? Erlock. Ah! Uh, do you think... Ghosts on board? <laughs> Meat love Ghosts... There can only have been a single bone in the wardrobe when Rinosuke moved to hide under the bed. Which means that the other two bones can only have been put there by one very flesh and blood person. <laughs> What's so funny? We're on a... On a... On a ghost ship! A great detective, or a great mischief maker. Either way, I think I'd like to spend a little more time getting to know that man. Oh, fuck. You had to make it sad! I mean, there's no way it, was, it wasn't going to be sad, because we know what's going to happen with him, but... Uh, the great Herlock Sholmes. Oh. Okay, I believe... 
This escapade takes place as Ryonosuke and Susato visit Lord Strongheart to report on the outcome of Mr. Natsume's trial. They find a flustered Inspector Gregson attempting to solve a very taxing problem before his time runs out. Okay. Mm. Not... We haven't met Inspector Gregson yet, and Mr. Natsume... I assume Mr. Natsume would be... Like, because they forgot to translate, uh... McGill? But I don't know for sure, so... Onwards! I begin to think, Wilson, said Sholmes, turning his head languidly in my direction, that there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement to Longbriar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Nineteenth of February, nine forty-seven a.m. British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Did you sleep last night, Miss Narahodo? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious. I felt like we were staying in a palace. And with all the gas lights twinkling, it was brighter than day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time in the SS Boria, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. Oh, it was Sasato who said that thing. Uh. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh, yes. It really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except, when I learned that we owed three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Whoops! Sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. Uh, I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire stipend will be used up in ten days or less. Uh, oh, London is a scary place. Hmm. Ah, good morning to you at this early hour. Don't quite remember the voice I gave him, but, you know, dark and British, easy. Oh, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, well? Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We've come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Sarasan is amazing. She doesn't bat an eyelid, even in the presence of the imposing Lord Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive initiation into British courtroom practice. Oh yes, it was very eye-opening, thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Narohodo performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh! No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Uh, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case? Already? 
Nothing trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? The truth? The culpability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. Ah, oh, Lord One Six, it's been a pleasure, so it has. I'd ask for you, my dear fella. I couldn't have asked for a better defence. I just can't help but wondering if Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Mr. Narahodo, it's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGilded passed away, immediately following the trial. No! What? Mr. McGilded is dead? I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. So that's who it was inside the carriage, was it? Well now! Oh, actually, since we're here, we have the opportunity. Heck famine. This must be the Lord Chief Justice's desk. I believe it's made of marble. It looks more like an over-the-top tombstone that's toppled over to me. I think that's your fanciful imagination at work again, Mr. Narahodo. It feels like everything is normally made of wood and paper at home. It's made of bricks and stone here. I know. That's why this place feels so overbearing, I'm sure. Just look at all the naughty books packed together on these shelves. They go from floor to ceiling. No, they don't. What do you mean? And they're all books you couldn't hope to come by in Japan. That's like a dream. Yeah, a very bad dream. They're not all about British law, either. They're books about the judicial system of other Western nations. France, Germany, Spain, Holland. What about Russia? Uh, why do you ask? Well, I was wondering about asking the Lord Chief Justice how to say wardrobe in, in Russian. What do you think? I think perhaps it's a thought best abandoned. Look at these menacing metal giants facing each other across the room. I believe they're... yes, they're suits of armor. Oh, right. I thought maybe they were like the lion dogs we have in Japan guarding shrine gates. Uh, no, not at all. In fact, in Europe, suits of armor like these are always possessed by evil spirits, you know. And they roam around in the middle of the night. Uh, really? Is there nothing you don't know, Mr. Sato? This book tells me everything I need to know about everything. If you're ever unsure, just ask. Where did she get that incredible tome? 50 years out of date, of course. <laughs> Is this some kind of clock? Actually, I, uh, I think we might be inside some sort of giant clock. But those gears are larger than anything you'd find in a steam locomotive, even. It's eerie. You think clocks are some sort of hobby of his? The Lord Chief Justice, I mean? Well, boys do enjoy fiddling around with machines, don't they? I'm not sure you could fiddle with cogs that size. I'm certain you couldn't call him a boy. Still, it's amazing how little noise the cogs make considering how large they are. There's actually something quite soothing about their precise rhythm. Let's see. Anything we haven't examined yet? Oh, we can look to the right and there's nothing there. We can look to the left and there's nothing there. 
Okay, kind of looks like we got everything. Cool. Okay, uh, how did he die? I mean, I know, but I don't understand. What happened? How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the old Bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yeah, of course. That was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGilded had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing as ha have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already... The police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of McGinted. That's awful! The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elf elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. And how could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilder did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? Well, they're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. An inspection of the omnibus? But to my knowledge, I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But, but, but then who was Mr. McGilded talking about? Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. Huh. So... How did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Oh, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was... wow. Mr. Narahuda means that the whole experience was steeped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. And it's sort of... mad populism. <laughs> it's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, so sato has such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. How did you know what I was saying inside myself? The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate that your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but the case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> Is something funny? No, no, my apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I've prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me it's a murder and the trial starts in ten minutes. Don't worry, there's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last assignment. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did, did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died as yet. 
The trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Ha 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 ha, so the trial's tomorrow then. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Naruhoto. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Mr. McGilded's trial. Ah, yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh! If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Here we go again. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you begin to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes and 39 seconds until the court sits. Last time you mentioned the 23 hours, you said there was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Naruhodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh, uh, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, uh, uh, Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world works so he could change hours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Oh. Another thing? Continue. On the way here, on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important that I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He, he never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he... You're out of town? Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Naruhoto, what's all this about? Mr. Soki never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be able to apprise you of the details. How long has he been there? So, I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. There's something very important that I have to do. Cosmos, I'm a... What did you mean? I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we'd better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. Oh, have to examine him. Hello. Um, could we trouble you? What do you think? Oh! Uh, uh, lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather got to do with anything? Uh -huh. Listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. Some frippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent yeeting out your hand, you know? Uh, but Susanna-san told me it was a foolproof. I'm a busy man. A very busy man. It's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. Oh, uh, well, I'm ever so sorry. Let's make his voice a little softer. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying, eh? Haven't seen Gretchen anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the big wigs these days. And all because of some bumpkin who's here in a joint from a country I've never even heard of. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. Well, there's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. 
This is Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, a defense lawyer. Hey. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant, Su- Hey. It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? The weight's unseasonably fine, I grant you. London windows don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable! How did you pull that off? So, um, Lord Strongheart has asked me to fill you in on the case. The name's Tobias Gregson, Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson? Uh, uh, ins Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with Sasato san? Does this detective's name mean something to her? Inspector, are you perhaps the Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Mr. Sato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he features prominently in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, in that publication. What's it called again? Ranced Magazine? That's right. Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy a wonderful friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with a good from time to time. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You've earned his highest praise. Gregson's the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. <laughs> Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not. And thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over London now. Well, that's great, isn't it? Hey, well, I have to admit that to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand and my reputation at the art went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it is not. There's nothing more sinister than the man on the street. Babel always looking at me now. They're whispering rumours about me under their breath, I'm sure. Rumours? Uh, are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head. Stuff like that. Gosh, do, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like I said, they whisper. So I can't catch exactly what they're saying, but I know what folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying. As sure as eggs is eggs. I get the feeling this detective could be very hard work. Oh dear. Perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we're concerned in the yard, it couldn't be simpler. Oh dear, that probably means that as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. The young woman was walking along the pavement in the briar route when she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she still laid up in hospital, unconscious. That's despicable. What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? Well, I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with a society takedown, would you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Naruhoto. Brace yourself, Rinosuke, you've angered her now. Anyway, after something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So, there must have been something left at the scene that led you to directly to the culprit. Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question. Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to hit the bloke now. Why haven't... Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Beric Fensix. No! <laughs> Sounds like you've heard of him then. Oh, yes, we're very familiar with Lord Fensix. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Lord Barrett Barrack von Seeks, who we faced in court only yesterday. 
Mr. McGilder told us about him before the trial, didn't he? When and six stands for the prosecution, they call the accused a sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. It happened in this one as well, remember? The accused was damned, even if he wasn't convicted. This Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty? Is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector, that in yesterday's trial, Lord Van Seek against Lord Van Seek, Mr. Narahoda secured a verdict of not guilty. Huh. <laughs> and what of it? Oh, uh, well, uh, I think that means that even the Reaper of the Bailey, uh, it's not impossible to, against even the Re even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to say the defendant. Blah, 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 blah. No, but you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah! Magnus McGill that came a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? What, what, what are you saying? Look, if one six could get the dirty stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long think about that if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? All of the people that he prosecutes die. That's what it is. Right, well, I've filled you in as requested, and I'm very nearly out of chips. So, I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Briar Road, you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place? That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the Holden's Hills, you can meet the criminal himself. You branded him a criminal already? He's as good as, shaking like a leaf in his cell he is. He'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. Oh, compassionate, Inspector. He's inmate 53. Speak to the jar lane, he'll show you the way. Inmate 53, thank you. So, there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Narahodo? To tell the truth, when I recalled the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent... Well, you could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't have find the sight of that funny. So... If I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try, so I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? After all, I am your judicial assistant. Thank you. Uh, so then, shall we? Yes, let's go. Indeed. Let's start at the prison. See the defendant. Nineteenth February, local prison cell nine. So, these are British prison cells. Oh, the ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. That's because it is. Yeah, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Naruhodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. Am I 53? Your legal representative is here to see you. Stop biting at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I a cat? Am I a cat as yet with no name? Are we defending a poet? Oh no. 
calling me by a number. It's utterly unbelievably unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. I don't know what voice to give them yet, so... Mr. Naruhodo, what... What do you think is going on here? I have no idea, but I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints wasn't Japanese. Well, there's a character. Uh, excuse me, but who... Shh, quiet. Since, since, since I've made Ryunosuke sort of vaguely American, I guess I'll make this Edgar Allan Poe looking motherfucker <laughs> vaguely American as well. They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening. Even now, I can sense it. Um, right. So, could I ask you, who exactly- There you are! You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it! You're a ghost! A ghost? We mean you no harm, prisoner-san. Are you... Japanese, by any chance? Oh, there's the anime eyes. This is... This is... Beyond my wildest dreams! Oh, wait, he's not Japanese, he's... Oh no, is he a weeb? Is he a weeb? Oh, please don't be a weeb. <laughs> Forgive me for that outburst before. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown, and here I am in a frightful fix in a for... Foreign... No, he is Japanese and- oh no. Oh no, oh no, it's Larry! It's Larry! <laughs> I'd recognize that pose anywhere. Yeah, if you've played the Phoenix Wright games before, you know- you know Larry. He's probably not gonna be called that, but yeah, that's uh, that's Larry. So, hearing the sweet sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was- uh, uh, most monumentally moving moment! Well, who could have guessed this new client Lord Strongheart assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? Oh, uh, what compassion my fellow countrymen show to dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student! Noble, nurturing, never failing Nippon! A, a, a first class lawyer? No, oh, a first class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's some kind of misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be too kind to, so kind to tell us what happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yeah, yeah, I can, I will! Shan't stay sullen and silent! I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he, he seems happy. Yeah, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Adam Naruhodo-san's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotaba. Mikotoba, yeah. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably notoriously named Natsume. Sosuke Natsume. Sosuke Natsume, son. What an unusual name. Call me Soski, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean a alias? That's right, Naruhoto-san. No, no, no! Don't be so prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And haiku? That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student? Sent over here by the government? Yeah, yeah, that's right. A, a year ago, I was told to go and study English. Uh, first, I had to suffer that misery, and now this. It's beyond the pale! Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No, I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course, but... Oh. But... 
Just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean you can do it? No. What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature that, I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly unreasonable! I see. Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on whitewashing! You must be a man of great standing. Oh yeah! So I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. Would you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, soski son I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no, uh, no, 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 it's all right. Uh, the woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife! Right before my eyes! Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? Well, I, I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's incredible, ins inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient. Words that describe you too, my friend. So, sotsuki san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about the case. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. He really, like... Are we intentionally doing an Edgar Allan Poe riff here? Is that what we're doing? Sure, the bookshop wasn't a curse, too. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat she was, and just as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. <laughs> How terrible. I called out to the woman, but she didn't moan. It, it was like a ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's not good. They'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, sosuke san was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? And a young woman at that! I'm different, shy, timid, unsure! I can't talk to people! Ah, uh, I see. A young woman unknown to sosuke san And at the time it happened... Who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you and there was nobody else in the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Huh? What conundrum? What do you mean, Sasada-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what Sorsky sent us has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim, and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did! I did! But if that's the case... Surely this man has to be the culprit. Ah! You... What did you just say? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't say anything. Oops. Perhaps I thought that a little loudly. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Sosuke-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? 
He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So, how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh yeah, she's right. It, it was him. That accursed great detective. He let the police to me! Of all the bad luck. A cursed great detect oh, a cursed great detective? Oh, could it be? I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live. With his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Brash, big-headed, busybody be gone! May you be cursed until the end of your days, Hairlock Sholmes. I... I knew it. M Mr. Sholmes? Of course it's him. Good, we get to do another dance of deduction, I hope. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a sliver of heart cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police. Put the weapon down. Yeah, it was a thin sliver, and yes, it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting dietary discrimination, devils. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. He's just turning more and more southern as we go. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that Herlock Sholmes! It's actually just Herlock Sholmes. He's English. I've since found out he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective really is very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman! Me! This weak, stooped kitten of a man! I wonder what great deduction process led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholmes' deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, uh, well, the thing is, I was... I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were, that's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me in impossible English. Fiendish foreign flim flammery! Well, we are in England. You really can't blame them for questioning you in English. Oh, good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, Yes, I do, and I'm fine. The next thing I knew, I was in manacles. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine? He's not fine now. <laughs> Mr. Narahoto Esquire! Oh, uh, you can just call me Narahoto. And when we're speaking English, a simple Mr. is more than enough. Oh, yes, uh, alright, yes, uh, they've, uh, they've, they've really got to me. This country's poisoning my mind. Please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself on a study tour. A, a student? I've defended a case in the Old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Uh, Naruhuto-san. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm... I'm a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. But, 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 but that arm, man! That's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire! Well, it's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. Uh, a keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, uh, who do you mean? Lawyers. All the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness, w w why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before. When it happened, 
There was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, soski son And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them, somebody not to be trusted. I heard him openly laughing about me before, in my earshot, without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man will be a waste of time, they said. Of course the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say, the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong. I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there in the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. That is extremely accurate for Britain. The country with the strangest English accents in the entire fucking world gets snooty when they hear something that doesn't sound like a British accent. Or an American one. They're generally pretty subservient to the Americans. So, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it. Couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Sasuke san, it's just that. <sighs> Give me a little time, please. Huh? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you, locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire. We should be going then, Mr. Naruhoto-san. <laughs> Mr. Naruhoto-san, why the fuck did I say that? Oh, no. We have a case to prepare for. Poor guy. It's supposed to- I just wanted to make him different from Naruhoto. Um, because Naruhoto's up here, like, he has this voice. So I figured if I wanted something that's, like, distinctly different, a little bit more camp <laughs> than him. Then something like this certainly seems like the way to go! <laughs> 19th February, Briar Road. That's a broken down bicycle. Strand Street, of course. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah, look, Mr. Naruhoto. Is that... Are those clothes warm enough for you, Sasato? Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know? But Mr. Naruhoto, to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I'd never dreamt I'd even come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The, the helmet? He, of course. I have to try one, one, one on one day. Well, I hope your had dream comes true. There he is. <laughs> Watch the Japanese delegation doing here. Oh, Inspector Gregson. This is not the tourist trials. I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been to the olden cells then? What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Yeah. We'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Quit it with the racism, but as you can tell at this point, it's a theme. It's a theme. Like, very much an theme. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Aha, uh -huh, the stone-cold air of rejection. Take heart, London this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That makes it worse somehow. It happened at around five in the evening, two days ago, just there on that bit of open pavement. 
The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it r right that the lady's still unconscious now? You mentioned she's been treated in hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes round pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area, haven't you, on me? You can talk it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defending suspects the old bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Sweet. That's gonna come in handy. I know why. As far as I know, there is no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it? Who do you think? Not much of a head scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsumi is also claiming not to have seen anyone around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone, it doesn't mean we can't be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It what? With two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah! He was a typical foggy London die, and your client obviously didn't see him. There were witnesses now? Well, isn't that interesting? Who are these witnesses, Inspector? Fellow and his wife. The man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah! A, a, a policeman? Well, that might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked. Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby. Catching him being in the act and all that. Uh, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I've no doubt you'd be somebody's weakness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that could, this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yeah, as a non-judicial assistant, I could I could have warned me of that too. Oh yeah, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect? I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Did he have to do the dance of deduction? <laughs> Is that why? Uh, tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know, I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing the policeman there with his, with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever actually interacted with the Metropolitan Police, you might take a very different view. Oh yes, doesn't it look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is all going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you've got, you know what he does? Goes around and raises all the libraries on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yup. Raps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. Just another one of his deities. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's that's definitely taking things a step too far. <laughs> Literally. And when it gets dark, of course, she has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. 
Oh my. And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well? And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it uh, in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narukuro. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. That twitchy Japanese bloke gets in trial tomorrow. Are you gonna defend him or not? Well, um... Uh... Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt will touch, touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, I mean? There's no way to save the men now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. The only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals, the violent ones. M master criminals? The, the, the violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But, but, but Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? Well, that's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't have a the intent was there. So, this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sing his teeth into for what of about Frace. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, oh, but it's got to be more to it. For some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? Yeah, you think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself in tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as you put it. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, uh, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings? I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Fatal fail! The man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his muck everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yeah, he's quite <laughs> astounding, isn't he? he? He is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble. You ever seen this before? Oh, yeah, that's Ranst Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called great detective makes a muckery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Herlock Sholmes tales at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Narahodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yeah, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Oh, look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsumi did blame Mr. Sholmes for all this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you going to just ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it is not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. Well, the trouble is, 
We have no idea of the man's address even, so how? It's Baker Street. H how do you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Uh, well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We'd better try to find our way there before Sasada-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll summon a carriage. So, we're to have a reunion already. With a great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Well, we could examine a little bit before we, you know. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows, then. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, 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 I wasn't serious. <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowman as well. It looks a little creepy, though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look. You'd need one if you're out this freezing cold all the time. Wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his? But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know, you're right. Anyway. Even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. Let's say, uh, hello, Mr. Bobby. That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's how it works with the police. Oh, no, 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 I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I find myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Well, yes, you, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no favors at all. <laughs> this patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Well, the bush is there. Oi, what are you foreigners doing here? Huh? Oh, uh, we, uh, just investigating the scene after conspiring with that moustache fella from Japan, are you? Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have you? Get out of here before I give you an item. Go on. See, that's more like the police. Shoot us away like rats. Yeah, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. There are piles of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over when I was walking down the pavement earlier. It seems like it would be far safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Naruhodo, and dressed all in black. I worry coachmen might not see you and you could be flattened by horses. Well, uh, thank you for the rather small concern. Clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it is known as Foggy London Town. I can just make out some sort of spire through the fog. Looks like it's still being built, though. Oh, that would be the uh, crystal tower for the exhibition thing. Aha, yes, that must be the crystal tower. <laughs> okay, being built for the great exhibition that's to open in six months' time. Apparently, it's going to be very striking, glazed on all sides, and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition in history, is it? Can't even begin to imagine it. Oh, look at the windows of that building there. Are you sure they're windows? Yeah, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Oh dear, everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. I confess, I also don't know why the windows are filled in. That's a weird thing. 
Oh, a British bicycle, look! Oh, though the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I won't see why anyone want to ride something like that. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet off firm ground seems reckless. If you've never tried walking on stilts and falling into a river, I know you'd agree with me. We'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. <laughs> That's adorable. Let's see, the lamps? No, the door is still yes. Ah, uh, but there's nothing else. Uh, the chimney here? Aha! Uh -huh. uh, do you see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in winter by using coal. The only chimneys I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. Do you think some of those houses could be on fire? Not at all. Well, even so, that much thick smoke building up to the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. Oh, Ryunosuke. Not black, just warm. Gosh, you may be right about that. Although, black also, yes, eventually. <laughs> That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks as in decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yeah, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonably level floors. And is that it? Is that it all? Is that all of the things? Let's see got the carriage, we've got the snowman, we've got the policeman, we've got the crime scene. How about anything up here? No, 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 and no. Cool. Time to move! A new location has been added. Shomes is sweet. Here we go. Wait, where's all the snow? Okay. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shows. Nineteenth February, twelve fifty three PM, Sholmes is sweet. This is a good Sherlock Holmes interior. Very eccentric and silly. So, this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels real to be here somehow. Do we get to meet Mrs. Hudson? Is it as described in the stories, Mr. Sato? Uh Sasada san? Many, many famous cases have been solved here, in this very room. Oh, uh, I suppose they must have been, yes. I've never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down an under London street. Oh, the thrill of it, the romanticism. Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Narohoto? Oh, uh, I, I suppose I can, yes. So if you don't mind, I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a little while longer. Please, please, oh, please don't mind me. <laughs> oh, she's obsessed. Well, looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me? Anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? I think I, th yeah, it's her. I knew it. I knew it! Hello. Is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Uh, hello. Wait. Aren't you... Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. 
I'm sure it's the same girl. Mrs. Sada, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh yes, isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Jones to take on his case. The, the, the King of Bohemia? King Willem Gottschreich, Sigismund von Ormstein, of course. Sorry, I, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Sherlock Sholmes for a second and look over there. Tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Ah, it's you. I knew it. Sasada san recognizes her too. Shit, their voices are too close to each other. Fuck. Ah, there you are. And taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. So now we know who builds Shomes' stuff. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. I got, I have to go even higher for her to make her different from Sasada. Oh no, I've pulled myself into a corner. <laughs> it's the girl that turned up at the end of Mr. McGilda's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was ch challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, uh, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you've another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Uh, uh, did, did Mr. Shums tell you about us uh, by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Shums to you, surely. Mr. Shums was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the, tri the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here, Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me. I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you. Meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. Wilson. Oh no, <laughs> of course. I live here together with Hurley. Ah, Irish, is it? What a lovely name. What? Uh, what's the matter? No, wait, this, this can't be. Did, did you say, did you say that your, your name is Wilson? What's the matter with Sasato-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? You know a Wilson, or you know a skip. Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, uh, I'm Ryunosuke Naruhoto, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant, assistant Susato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie? And Runo? There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. That It is a very adorable design. <laughs> it really is. That's a very cute character design. Little much, but very cute. <laughs> it was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey? Ah, oh, yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though, at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this. <laughs> ah, thinking back now, you left with Mr. Strad in tow, didn't you? Oh yeah, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Ginny, yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial-disrupting gun-like contraption? 
Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusted technician. Sorry, your technician? Did you see that little finger point? Did you see how it's exactly the same gesture that Sherlock or Herlock makes? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Uh, Hurley? Hmm. Yes, Herlock. Herlock Sherms. We live here together. I, I, I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Oh, not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sherms? Well, I expect you found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten last, at last this year. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh, no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Yeah, I wonder what happened to her dad. <laughs> oh, yes. There's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of Ranst magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My story is being read on the other side of the world. M my stories? That's right. Early is always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever served them, don't you think? Oh, she's... She's the... <laughs> okay. So Sherlock Holmes' stories are all written... Well, they're written with the conceit that they are texts being passed down by Dr. Watson, uh, who's his partner in solving crime. But I guess here, it's not so much Dr. Watson as it is... Uh... <laughs> Iris. Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. I didn't actually know I could get my voice that high and keep it there, but okay. I guess we're going with it. Sorry. <laughs> like, sorry if it's a little unpleasant to anyone. So, you, you were the author. Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. The Speckled Band? Well, that's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Sholmes' first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course, I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story. Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in Ranst magazine? All written by me, yes, on my wonderful and very modern typewriter. But, but all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson. Sasato sounds getting more and more worked up. Ah, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I'm a doctor of medicine. No! At ten years old? At ten years old? Well, uh, that's quite incredible. But, 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 Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the setting slightly, for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow? I... I suppose it does, yes. <laughs> Someone's deflated. <laughs> Poor Sasato-san, she looks like her whole world has just fallen apart.
Um, about before. Yes, yes, what's on your mind, Runa? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and that we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How do you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. But please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. <laughs> First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runa. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defense antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How do you know that? Because of the ticket that's sticking out of your pocket. Rio. I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh! So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that, you accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. Uh -huh, the Reaper of the Bailey? I right, walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with the suspect, weren't you? Earlier today? Ah. They use those stamps to keep a close eye on the comings and goings, you see. I, I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So that told me that even though you had only just yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already been caused to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face, so I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. <coughs> it is straining my voice a little bit, I will say. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I I see. But how could you have known that, at the tr that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused me. Um, he told me that he'd caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Natsume. Now, Runa has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion that those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. I love her? <laughs> There's a note on the map piece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley's always stabbing at his notes with a knife, you know. He's silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. And that genuinely was a great deduction. Classic Holmes, like classic Holmes. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on! That was amazing, Irish. Truly a great deduction. You even managed the certain something in Mr. Sholmes' delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Irish? Please. So, yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man? Mr. Notson had beyond any doubt. sosuke san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. But it seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man, shivering in fear. Uh, uh, Mr. Sholmes' great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective. 
Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to, to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on, to on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. Yeah, that innocent people get convicted all the time. Gee, I wonder how that could happen. Uh, I, I suppose it is, but in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Soski san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, well... I expect Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Nat Nat Natsume? Uh, Hurley says he was going to go to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, oh, Gordy. In that case, give Gregson this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five-shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. This is so cute. <laughs> it reads, tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea. So come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. <coughs> okay. I, I think I think I can handle that voice. I think I can handle it. Like my throat, like it, it tensed up a little bit. But if I sort of, but if I modulate it just a little bit, it's okay. It's all right. Oh man, I should I should have examined Holmes's place first. So somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all, we headed back to the scene with with Iris's curious note and one of the world's sil heaviest silver coins in hand. This is going to be another two-hour episode. Oh, just barely. Okay. Save your current progress. Yes, I think I will. <laughs> the Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro. Kokoro being the Japanese word for heart. So, I think maybe there's a Sherlock Holmes adventure that's called the Clouded Heart as well. Probably. Anyway, whoo, that sure was a lot. <laughs> I have enjoyed it. Oh, God, I love this game. This is so much fun. Uh, <laughs> and I hope my voices have not annoyed any of you. Anyway, if you've enjoyed hanging out in the world of the great Ace Attorney with me, you can hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons down below, and they will let you know when another episode of this series is up. If you want to watch more of it right now, then if this is the last episode on the playlist, then there's an outside chance that there might be some more episodes still to come that are locked behind memberships on this channel because uh, I upload episodes in a bunch and then I set them live one after another over time but if you want to see them all right now you can do memberships on the channel and that'll give you early access I also have a Patreon merchandise store and a tip jar you can use them if you want to but if you don't want to you do not have to it's completely okay thank you very much for watching remember to wear a mask and wash your hands and take the vaccine like all of these things need to happen still probably more than one vaccine frankly before this is all over and try to act with solidarity towards those who are worse off than yourself